Do I have rosacea? That's the question that we're going to talk about today. Welcome. I'm Dr. Arthur Kolsky, founder and medical director of Advanced Acne Institute, where I'm actually shooting this video from today. And we are a dermatology practice focusing solely on the treatment of acne. And we like to bring you insights and experiences that we have. We like to share them as educational opportunities, but this is not meant to be medical advice. So a question commonly comes up with my patients. And the question is, do I have rosacea? Because rosacea is in the category of acne. It's something that can look a lot like acne and sometimes can be very difficult to discriminate between acne and rosacea. So it is something that we need to take into consideration. And sometimes patients feel that maybe what they have is rosacea. So it's also a possibility to have both rosacea and acne. We have had patients with both. Now, what is rosacea and how does it differ from acne? So rosacea is an inflammatory condition with breakouts, just like acne. Typically it's, it's located on the face, on the cheeks, on the nose. The nose is a big area that's involved with rosacea, the chin, the forehead. These are all areas where we see rosacea breakouts. Now rosacea commonly occurs in adults. It's not as common to see rosacea in younger patients, but we do see it sometimes. And it's a condition that is different from acne in that there are no comedones, there are no blackheads. Whereas in acne, there are blackheads, whiteheads, and comedones. Those are called technically comedones. And we see those in acne, and that's something that tells us, yes, these are acne breakouts. With rosacea, we don't see that. We just see the red um, breakouts. And they can be small pimples, and they can be very large nodules, cystic areas, just like in acne. So we can see a lot of the similarities overlapping between the two conditions. Rosacea also tends to be common in patients with redness, with flushing. So that's a typical scenario where the blood vessels in the face get dilated and, and you can see flushing where the face gets kind of red. That can happen in embarrassing situations or in, in heat, in uh, areas where there's a lot of heat or drinking alcohol or com consuming spicy foods, anything that can make the, the blood vessels dilate and the face get flushed, that's something that we commonly see in rosacea patients. And, and a lot of rosacea patients have this baseline redness with little blood vessels in the face that are evident. And even without breakouts, that can be present. That's a form of rosacea without having actual pimples. Um, but patients tend to develop pimples um, with rosacea, just like with acne, and the treatments can be very similar. Um, with rosacea, a little different than acne are those sensitivities that I mentioned, sensitivity to certain foods and to certain environments, anything that is, is um, potentially uh, harsh on the skin in the sense that it causes dilation of the blood vessels. So acne is a little bit different, but acne has some similarities in that regard as well. Now with rosacea, um, topical medicines can be used just like in acne. They're not typically all that effective. Um, topical medicines sometimes can, can have a good result, but a lot of times when somebody's having a real um, big um, flare up of rosacea, in those circumstances, sometimes we use antibiotic pills and they tend to work pretty well with rosacea. Um, in acne, antibiotic pills can work as well, but typically we see a bigger response in patients with rosacea to antibiotic pills. And so sometimes that's all it takes, a couple of weeks of an antibiotic pill at the right dose and the right antibiotic, and we can have rosacea go back to baseline where those breakouts diminish and go away. Of course, there are usually some redness that's left behind, but that's kind of a baseline of rosacea. Now, Sometimes we can use an antibiotic pill in a very, very low dose as a maintenance dose for rosacea, and that can keep people clear for long periods of time. And using such a low dose sometimes is a very safe thing to do in that context. So that's one way that we can manage rosacea. Um, sometimes we use medicines just like we do in acne, such as Accutane to treat rosacea. Uh, so it, it's something that is in the realm of, of acne, but we, and, and some people call it adult acne, but it's really not acne, it's, it's, a, it's a distinct um, condition, and it does have some, some differences in management. 
Another thing that, that we do for rosacea when people have just that baseline redness that tends to be very prominent, there are some topical medicines that can constrict those little blood vessels and they can keep the skin looking less red for significant periods of time each day. So that's another option that we have to treat that form of early rosacea. So it is something that should be considered because if you think that you have rosacea, then your dermatologist can look and see and make sure that that's either the, the, is the case or it's not the case because you wanna make sure that you know what you're treating. And if there's some question mark in that regard, you wanna try and define that more definitively so that the treatment is geared toward the particular condition you have. But like I said, a lot of times treatment can be very similar between the two conditions. And it's, it's very similar in the way it behaves and the way people feel about it. It bothers them inside emotionally. So it can have a lot of effects internally as well as the way it appears physically. So it's a good idea to make sure that your diagnosis is refined if there is some suspicion that maybe you do have rosacea and that will help to define your treatment a little bit more and get you in the right direction to getting better.